What's your name, scumbag? Sir, Private Brown, sir! Bullshit, from now on, you're Private Snowball. Do you like that name? Sir, yes, sir! Well, there's one thing that you won't like, Private Snowball. They don't serve fried chicken and watermelon on a daily basis in my mess hall. Sir, yes, sir! Full Metal Jacket, directed by Stanley Kubrick, is a cinematic masterpiece. And due to Kubrick's love of secrecy, there are numerous unanswered questions concerning the movie. Number 30. Arlie Ermey was actually a drill sergeant. The actor Arlie Ermey had been a drill sergeant himself after participating in the Vietnam War, and everything about him in the movie was correct. Number 29. Ermey was initially only intended to serve as a technical advisor. Despite Arlie Ermey's prior acting background, he initially joined the film crew of Full Metal Jacket as a technical advisor, not intending to portray Gunnery Sergeant Hartman. Number 28. All of the lines of Ermey were written by Ermey himself. Kubrick granted Ermey the freedom to write his own lines, recognizing that this would result in more genuine and believable dialogue. Number 27. Actually, it was in London instead of Vietnam. The filmmakers faced a challenge in depicting Vietnam accurately in the latter half of the film, so they managed to find a disused London power station that closely resembled the war photos, where they brought the Vietnam setting to life. Number 26. The weight gain of Vincent D'Onofrio set a new record. Vincent D'Onofrio, the actor who portrayed Private Gomer Pyle in Full Metal Jacket, underwent a remarkable transformation for the role. In a matter of months, he gained over 70 pounds to authentically embody the character. Number 25. The real name of Joker pays honor to a real soldier. In Full Metal Jacket, the protagonist, played by Matthew Modine, is primarily known as Joker. The character's name is a meaningful homage to James T. Davis, an actual American soldier recognized by the U.S. government as the first casualty of the Vietnam War, symbolizing its beginning. Number 24. During one wartime scene, Norfolk farmers believed they were actually being attacked. Filming a Vietnam War movie in the English countryside brought challenges, especially during a scene where a low-flying helicopter fired blanks from a machine gun over a Norfolk canal. But as the local authorities failed to reach everyone in the area, resulting in some residents on local farms being startled by machine gun fire and helicopter blades, they genuinely believed they were under attack. Number 23. A song that used the movie as a sample was legally considered obscenity. Papillon Susu had a brief yet unforgettable role in Full Metal Jacket as a Vietnamese sex worker. Notably, the controversial rap group 2 Live Crew sampled her dialogue in the popular song, Me So Horny. Number 22. One day of filming was once postponed after Kubrick found a family of dead bunnies. One day, a small incident brought misery to the set when Kubrick found out that a family of wild rabbits died due to the scene he was filming. Devastated, he halted work for the day and sent everyone home. Number 21. The movie served as an inspiration for Saving Private Ryan. Douglas Milsom's unconventional camera techniques in the intense battle scenes of the film created a disorienting and turbulent portrayal of the battlefield. This innovative approach greatly influenced future war movies. Number 20. The movie could have included Denzel Washington and Ed Harris as the leads. Denzel Washington and Ed Harris, rising stars at the time, were potential candidates for roles in Full Metal Jacket. However, Washington declined due to Kubrick's policy of not sharing the script in advance, while Harris turned down the role of Hartman. Both actors have since expressed regret over their decisions. Number 19. Because of the mistake of another actor, Tony Spiridakis' whole performance was eliminated. Despite having a significant role in the original screenplay, Spiridakis was completely removed from the final film at Kubrick's whim. Not only did he lose some lines or actions, but his character was entirely eradicated, including the longest continuous dialogue in the entire movie. Number 18. A sexual scene starring Matthew Modine was cut. After taking a production break for Christmas, Modine found out that Kubrick had added a new sex scene to the film, where Joker accepts the offer from a Vietnamese sex worker. However, Kubrick ultimately decided to remove the scene as he felt it compromised the film's cold and heartless atmosphere. Number 17. The writer of the book from which the movie was adapted sneaked into the shoot. The film Full Metal Jacket was adapted from Gustav Hosford's novel, The Short Timers. Hosford and two friends disguised themselves as extras and sneaked onto the film set to observe the film's progress. After being recognized by a crew member, he advocated for his rights and successfully convinced Kubrick and his team to credit him as a screenwriter. 
Number 16. Arlie Ermey was forbidden from conversing with anyone on set. In order to maintain the illusion that Ermey was separate from the rest of the cast, none of the actors were permitted to meet him before filming commenced. Number 15. Pyle was modeled on Phantom of the Opera star Lon Chaney by Vincent D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio was influenced by the legendary silent film performer Lon Chaney, who portrayed a number of horrifying but ultimately likable characters including the Phantom of the Opera and the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Number 14. The original plan for Sergeant Hartman was for him to be much more brutal. In Full Metal Jacket's first half, Sergeant Hartman emerges as an unrelenting enforcer of discipline, employing harsh insults and collective punishment to instigate hazing among recruits. Surprisingly, Arlie Ermey, who portrayed the character, actually dialed down the brutality from the original script. Number 13. In Canada, the movie's advertisements were muted. The film faced an uncommon hurdle in Canada when even its trailer and poster were censored. The Canadian authorities banned the airing of the trailer on television due to its tagline, In Vietnam, the wind doesn't blow, it sucks. The phrase sucks was apparently problematic for Canadian censors because they believed it would be obscene. Number 12. In relation to the movie, Val Kilmer challenged Matthew Modine to a fight. Val Kilmer auditioned for the role of Joker but didn't receive any response from the casting director. Frustrated, Kilmer, known for his temper tantrums, confronted Matthew Modine in a restaurant, accusing him of taking his part and challenging him to a fight. Number 11. The Marines' football game with a human head was deleted from the scene. Kubrick initially intended to depict Marines playing football with a severed human head against a barren backdrop. However, this graphic scene was deemed unnecessary and unrealistic, leading to its removal. Number 10. Arnold Schwarzenegger declined a part in the movie to take a lead in The Running Man. Ultimately, Schwarzenegger made the decision to pass on the opportunity to star in Full Metal Jacket, citing scheduling conflicts with his ongoing commitment to The Running Man. Consequently, the notable character of the animal mother found its new on-screen embodiment in the talented actor Adam Baldwin. Number 9. In his opening scene, Ermey aimed to intentionally catch the actors off guard. In the opening scene of Full Metal Jacket, Sergeant Hartman humiliates new recruits at boot camp. He targets Joker and Cowboy, but surprisingly skips over another soldier, focusing his harassment on Pyle instead. Number 8. The project received audition tapes from almost 3,000 performers. Over 3,000 auditions were received exceeding expectations, requiring the casting director and team to review them all. Kubrick personally watched over 800 auditions and made decisions based on impressive performances. Number 7. There was actually a mistake for Pyle to defy Hartman's commands. Hartman's initial outburst didn't include the assumed blocking error, but the film still had its mistakes. Despite Kubrick's attention to detail, one slip-up made it into the final cut. In a scene, Pyle seems to disregard Hartman's command to retrieve his hat, remaining motionless instead. Number 6. 6,000 wartime images were utilized to create a Vietnam-inspired setting in England. Kubrick hired Anton First, known for his design work in Tim Burton's Batman, to handle production design. First's impressive work on The Company of Wolves caught Kubrick's attention, and he specifically wanted him for the film's challenging battle scenes. Kubrick, true to his style, didn't make it a straightforward process. Number 5. Kubrick would have cast Bill McKinney for Deliverance as Sergeant Hartman, but he was too terrified of the actor. Despite his composed demeanor in interviews and on set, Kubrick was surprisingly unnerved by the 1972 film Deliverance and the performance of Bill McKinney, who played a ruthless and sadistic woodsman. Number 4. Filming was delayed by four and a half months due to a near-fatal injury. Arlie Ermey was involved in an automobile accident late one night during filming, breaking all the ribs on one side of his body. His injuries contributed to the film's nearly one-year production time exactly from August 27, 1985 to August 8, 1986. Number 3. During filming, the actors received the same treatment as actual Marines. The young actors genuinely went through repetitive drills, maintained shaved heads, and endured Arlie Ermey's relentless yelling for up to 10 hours a day, even outside his role as Surgeon Hartman. Number 2. Everywhere you look, Mickey Mouse is mentioned. 
Towards the end of the movie, when the Marines are departing from Hue while it's being destroyed, they cheerfully sing the theme song from the Mickey Mouse Club TV show. This Disney reference doesn't appear just once, though. You can spot small statues of Mickey and Minnie Mouse displayed on the shelves in Lieutenant Lockhart's office. Number 1. There was a famous Vietnamese character in the film Papillon embraced the role and portrayed the Vietnamese prostitute, who would ultimately garner enduring recognition through a single, impactful line, Me love you, long time. Let us tell you Papillon Sue came into this world in England, United Kingdom, back in 1961. Papillon, once a law student, spent her formative years in Australia before forging a successful path in the world of modeling. She graced the pages of renowned magazines like Vogue, garnering attention in high-profile roles. Her venture into the film industry commenced in 1985 with a debut appearance in A View to a Kill. Her name has gained prominence due to her notable performances in renowned films like Full Metal Jacket, 1987, A View to a Kill, 1985, and Split Second, 1992. With her birth year set in 1961, Papillon Su now stands at the age of 62 as of the year 2023. Currently, Papillon occasionally participates in the convention circuit, but her engagements are sporadic. Apart from that, she embraces a serene existence detached from the realm of social media. Her Facebook presence remains virtually inactive giving the impression that she is perhaps enjoying a tranquil retirement off the radar. The last scene to be shot was the opening of the movie. In the opening scene of the film, we witness a group of teenagers, recently enlisted in the Marine Corps, visiting a barber shop. With the powerful melody of Hello Vietnam by Johnny Wright playing in the background, their heads are shaved, symbolizing the loss of their individual identities. Interestingly, this scene was the last one filmed by Kubrick, requiring the actor to return months later for its completion. And that's all for now. Thank you all for watching this video and joining us on this exciting journey. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell icon so you never miss an update from us. Thanks for watching!